hey, you can get some cool and fun rewards for helping me help kids. Stick around after the video for more information. Hey guys, Peter Franson here from ChristianGeekCentral.com and Spirit Blade Productions here to give you my first impressions of the first five hours of a little indie game called For Gone, which recently came to the PlayStation 4. Um, I uh, really enjoy the subcategory of Metroidvanias that I call Symphony Likes, that have a loot... Uh, system or an XP system that allows you to grind your way out of trouble if you're finding the game difficult in certain parts. You can kind of scale the difficulty to your tastes by grinding enemies, grinding experience. You know, that's what makes the Castlevania Symphony-like games so uh, appealing to me because I'm, I don't have the patience for uh, learning all the Twitch skills and memorizing enemy patterns and dying and repeating and dying and repeating. That's not my style of game at all. <clears throat> and I wondered what this game was going to be like because it clearly, uh, in the promo materials, was taking inspiration from symphony-like games, but also seemed to have maybe some Soulsy elements as well. So, uh, basically, I came into this wanting to do a review of the first few hours of it from the perspective of someone who does not like Souls games, does not like difficult games, uh, but really likes the exploration and the fun platforming of the uh, Castlevania Symphony type uh, uh, games. Um, so, let's see here. Let me just kind of give you a tour of some of the systems here. This is your hub world, and if you interact with the Thaumaturge here, you do have access to some skill tree options, and what I just discovered is uh, you're limited to a certain track. Once you choose one of these tracks here, uh, you lock out the other, apparently, which is kind of disappointing to me, but uh, I'm a little disappointed in what I'm seeing in the skill system so far. Uh, first off, look at this. Increase the damage by 1%. If I rank it up, it'll increase my damage by 2%. That just seems so small. Now, maybe it'll have a bigger effect in combat than I think it will, but I haven't really felt like putting points into it because I'm like, oh my gosh, my precious upgrade points, I, d I don't want to waste them just getting this this uh, increase that I might not even notice at all. So uh, that just seems kind of like a an odd choice to me. But I am going to follow this track here because it allows me to get some health back from defeating enemies potentially. Um, that's just a recent unlock. Um, I'm Again here, increased critical strike damage by 5%. Okay, that's more substantial than 1%, but how often do you get critical hits, you know? Um, well, let's see here. What's the other... Uh, this one. Okay, you can statically increase your health by 1%. Then if you upgrade it again, 2%. Then if you upgrade it again, 3%. Again, so minuscule compared to the amount of time that it takes to get these little blue points that you can see up at the top left of the screen. There's the coins, uh, that's one type of currency, and the blue gems, whatever the crap they are in the story or whatever, uh, those are basically experience points. Um, and so uh, s upgrades of weapons uh, usually just take coins and upgrades of your static traits uh, require uh, some combination of both, but the blue experience points are are more rare and precious. Um, so yeah, I, I'm not really feeling very excited about uh, a lot of the upgrade options here. So let's see here, what do we got? Um, oh, f I need this catalyst socket, which I got my first catalyst socket thing uh, from defeating a boss. So that's how you get those. Uh, you can't grind your way on just the, the normal grunt enemies to get those things, which is a bit of a shame. Um, let's see here. I can uh, go this route and dealing damage has a 10% chance to attach explosive charge. So now I, I get the sense that I that even five hours in, I've seen very little of the game. Part of that's because of my play style. Um, I've chosen to, of the three levels that I have access to, do a lot of grinding on the third of those three levels because the boss I fought once, he handed me my butt and I was like, I don't want to die to him um, again. I want to just do everything I can so I don't have to repeat material. I know it's a weird quirk of mine, but uh, I, I, so I just spent time grinding and grinding and grinding on that third level, which was not super fun. Uh, it was a little bit monotonous, but much preferred by me over getting killed by that, that by that first boss uh, more than uh, more than once. Um, so like there's there's stuff here like uh, referencing 
explosive charges and attaching a tether. I have no idea what those things are five hours in. Um, other players with different play styles, maybe that are used to more difficult games of this type, uh, would probably have unlocked those things by now because they would have been able to rely on their twitch skills, their reflexes, and their pattern memorization and stuff in order to defeat that first boss much sooner than I did. Um, so let's see here. You've got uh, what looks like could be a, a bunch of different talents that'll open up, but again, I've just seen the, the two that you essentially start with. One that allows you to dash forward and do kind of extra damage to enemies as you make your way through them. I haven't been leaning on that very much because it takes a while to recharge. Uh, the one I've been leaning on more, I tend to be a more defensive player when it comes to games like this, uh, is the just boosting my static health and then also boosting my ability to restore my own health through this restoration ability. Um, there are no kind of healing potions in this game. This is the closest thing to them that I've found so far and so that's what I'm really leaning on. Um, so those are some of like your, your character upgrades that you can do. It's fairly limited. You can't really upgrade your stats. Um, I, I'm trying to think if I've noticed any static stat upgrades. I think there might be um, some upgrades to your health that uh, just f from gaining a level. Wait a minute, are there even levels in this? I don't even know there are no levels. What am I even talking about? <laughs> That's right, your, your health gets boosted based on the different things that you can equip. This is really all about the loot that you pick up. And it's all fairly randomized. There are no stores that you can buy anything from. The money in the game is used to upgrade the weapons that you find. And like uh, the, the purple is the highest tier I've found so far, blue is like the mid tier, and gray is like just the, the base model. And you see those little black squares in the upper left corner of all the images of these uh, weapons. Those are the times, the number of times that that item can be upgraded. So uh, that's what I've been doing is grinding to hope to hopefully get some good drops uh, and then grinding for money to upgrade them as much as I can, both in terms of my weapons. And you've got s some different choices that show up here. In, in melee weapons alone, you've got the short sword, you've got daggers, uh, you've got this thing on Falchion, Falchion, I don't know how you pronounce that. I've seen nunchucks. Uh, and you can upgrade those. And, and they, they play differently too. They swing differently depending on uh, what they are. Uh, and then you've got some ranged weapons that you've got on the upper left corner. You've got like a bullet total there that... Uh, uh, that depletes as you fire off shots and then refills as you kill enemies and, and uh, break open crates and stuff. So this is your blacksmith. And as I said, uh, he allows you to upgrade your stuff. You can also mark anything that you don't want for salvage and then get rid of that and you get cash in exchange, which is helpful for you know upgrading your other uh, things that you are going to hold on to. So you've got like a necklace, a ring, a, a piece of chest armor, and that's about it for what you can wear. And then you've got a melee weapon and a ranged weapon. Um, all right, so let's actually get into a level here. Uh, and this will give me a chance to show you. Well, first off, what you just saw in the bottom left corner was the autosave happening. There's no manual save that I've, that I've been able to find so far, which is a little bit disappointing. And there aren't save points in the way that, like, the symphony-like Castlevania games have save points. Uh, instead, it's that autosave, which is predictably triggered at certain points. So there, you might say there are save points in that sense. Uh, so let's teleport to the level I left off on. And let's see here, I've been getting load times of uh, between 20 to 30 seconds. Um, I, I'll let you uh, count while I make some other comments, but uh, uh, that's been my average. And I, I have to say that I'm really disappointed in that for a game that is that, that looks the way this one does. It's retro graphics, it does not seem overly complex. That's, that's really frustrating to me when I see games from the AA space or the indie space that have big long load times when the system requirements really don't seem to justify it to me. Um, I do like the aesthetics, the visual aesthetics of the game. If I had my druthers, I would want something that doesn't have the jaggies and just went for more traditional cartoony looking sprites, but um, it, it's not it's not, I'm not looking at barfy Minecraft, you know, and so uh, this is kind of a nice halfway point. I like the way that she controls. She jumps in the graceful, fun way that I would expect for a game of this type. Um, 
Now, a lot of the game is dependent on using your, uh, your dodge maneuver effectively. So, for example, I hit dodge, get out of his swipe. He's going to swipe at me pretty soon here. Oops, missed. Did not do well there or there. So, as you can see, I'm really bad at this type of game. I take lots of hits, especially when I'm trying to record a review and talk at the same time. <laughs> um, and so, uh, I really depend on all these different drops that are uh, that are going to upgrade me. Now, here's my R2 ability, that restoration ability. Uh, as long as I have enough uh, mana, I guess, they don't call it mana, really, I don't think, uh, then I can recharge my health. But getting that mana back uh, requires me to do some melee attacks. That was a ranged attack just then. That doesn't get me any mana points back. Let's see, that's going to gouge me if I don't slide under there. Um, the controls also... Well, there's just things about the game that have taken a little bit of getting used to for me. Like, for example, um, let's see, well, let me look at... Here, I can unpause this so you can at least look at the screen while I'm talking. Uh, you can't double slide. So, well, I, I mean, you can, but it's, there's, there's a significant delay there. I'm, I'm hammering the slide button. Um, and, uh, if I'm... If I'm crouched, I mean, my instinct is to crouch to slide, but you don't really have to. You just hit circle and you slide. Um, and when you have ladders in this game... Let me see if I can find a ladder here. Now, there's, of course, not going to be one where I really want one. Um, I do like that, getting used to how she controls and getting used to using that slide so that you whack them once from the front and then you slide behind them while they're swinging in front of them. You know, kind of like sliding under their legs really quickly. There, once I started to get the hang of that, it was... I, I was experiencing the intended fun, I think, of the, of the combat, feeling like you're this really fast, acrobatic combatant. And she's got double jump from the very start. It's not a very huge double jump. I love the animations here. Look at that. This, uh, Time Spinner was the last game that was kind of in the territory of this genre that... Uh, that had like this nice little spin when you do the double jump. It's just so graceful. It just feels so cool to do that move. On top of that, if she gets to a ledge, she'll climb up the rest of the way. Um, so I definitely feel like I'm controlling this graceful acrobatic character, and I like that. Uh, let's see, this must be a secret area. Now this is one I've actually been to before, so it, before it had like uh, some cool rare drops in here, but they don't respawn. Um, with the rest of the level. And you can, I mean, levels do otherwise respawn in terms of monsters and even like basic treasure like cash. And so you can certainly grind for cash and experience. It's also similar to Symphony Light games in that uh, this was something, this was originally a big switch that I had to pull um, so that I could unlock where was that door there was a door around here somewhere i think it was i think it was right here in this in, uh you can't really see, see what i'm talking about but right in the center of my map there i think there used to be a door there and i think that's what that that uh, that switch unlocked um and this is you know a single level so it's it has it's a it each of these individual levels is pretty expansive and has that Metroidvania kind of vibe to it, of vertical exploration and doing things to unlock other areas, some of which involve just pulling switches. In fact, many, many times it's just pulling switches. Other times it does require you to get past a boss. I had to fight this boss here, as indicated in that room by the big red room and the skull there. Uh, I had to get past him in order to get down to this section and to unlock this waypoint here. Um, so, but it's not one big castle like in the Castlevania games or like in the game Chasm, another uh, game of that type that I really enjoy. Nice. Oh, here was the door. <laughs> here was the door. Yeah, yeah, okay, so I was right. Uh, let's see here. Now... I've been playing this game for five hours. I've been through uh, three levels already, and I'm kind of sad to say that I have not seen many new enemies in that time. Um, that's been... The, the enemy variety has been a little bit disappointing. 
um, you will probably see in this video all the different enemy types that I have seen over the course of uh, playing this game. Again, my five hours, you know, your mileage will vary. For most people, that'll probably be the first two hours, maybe the first three hours of what they'll see in the game if you're a more skilled player. Ooh! Now that guy, he's got a big wind-up, um, which is really handy, because if you get caught in that Gatling gun, gun you're going to lose a ton of your health. There are no difficulty settings for this game. See, that was the wind-up right there. Um, so, that's a little bit disappointing to me. Oops! Oh, crap. I'm not gonna do well in this area. Oh, the guy with the Gatling gun doesn't see me yet, though. That's good. Ooh! Yeah, that's an interesting thing about this game. You'll notice that touching him does not hurt me. That's, that's true of all the enemies I've run into so far. It's only their actual attacks that hurt you. Um, what else? There are some other interesting things about the way this game works. Um... There's no duck attack. Uh, when I'm ducking, I always want to <laughs> attack while I'm ducking. I want to attack down, or I want to attack while dodging, but you are forced to, uh, to stand up to attack. So, it's just little things like that that, um, that you just have to learn, and, and that I, I had to figure out, okay, this, that's how this game does things differently from what I'm expecting. Oh! Oof. See, I'm trying to take care of these guys, but also dodge the distant gunfire of these other guys. Guys with the blunderbuss. I think that's what you call those things, right? And you can see from the color coding, before you even pick up the item, if it's going to be a normal or a rare or a ultra, whatever the crap, purple. Now that guy, he's got a big wind-up, but he'll take a ton of health off of you, too, with that attack. And I'm actually doing um, more damage to these guys than I started out doing, uh, because I've been upgrading my weapons. So, I'm actually getting through each of these bad guys with fewer swipes than I was maybe an hour and a half ago. Uh, so, it, it's, it feels, in many ways, more like each enemy, each individual enemy is more of a threat than in the typical... A symphony-like game. And so I really wouldn't call this a symphony-like game. It's not like Time Spinner and Chasm and uh, the um, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. It's not quite in that category, I, I don't think. Oh, here's a ladder. I was going to say something about ladders earlier. Um, when you're doing your slide move... If, like me, you want to press down while you slide, you have that instinct, you're going to end up uh, s climbing down this ladder. Uh, and that can be... that can uh, th that's just mostly a problem I need to get over. Um, but it does cause some confusion when I'm in a tight area that has ladders with multiple enemies that I'm trying to deal with at the same time. Nice. So, like, those hanging guys that shoot spikes, um, I was never killing them with one hit before. That's a, a very recent development. Something else I noticed in this game is that, um, your attacks hitting an enemy, unless it's the death blow, does not interrupt their attack animations. You'll notice with that guy, he keeps moving forward with what he's doing. Oof. <laughs> um, I, I do find that I'm enjoying myself with this game, though. Despite the fact that it it is a little bit more demanding. I don't... I, I would not compare it to a Souls-like experience. Um, I have not died near as many times, and, and part of that is because I you can grind a bit to compensate for that, and so I have not... Um, 
when a game is, whenever a game is described either by the marketing team or by a reviewer as like compared to a Souls game, that's an instant turnoff for me. There are some games that I won't even bother considering. I won't even try out if they are uh, if they are compared to the Souls games in 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 regards to their difficulty or in regards to oh crap. Speaking of difficulty, um, oh man, he's really chasing me. I haven't seen that a lot in many enemies. Oh man, I got in the range. Oh, I'm frozen or something. Crap. Oof. Oh, crap. Oh, man. These guys. But I haven't found this to be as punishing as uh, m my very limited experience with um, Souls games or games inspired by the the Souls series. But because it has required some grinding for me, um, and more grinding than uh, I would have to do in a Symphony of the Night style game, um, it has made parts of it repetitive to the point where I thought, I am, I'll like this game, but only in short bursts. It's not going to be a game that I'm going to lose myself in and play from beginning to end. Oh, jeez, man. That could have gone very bad. Nice. Oh, oh man, I thought he was going to get me. That was close. <laughs> okay, so here's a locked door. i got to find the, uh, the switch for that. Hmm. Oh, boy. Now, some of those guys, the guys with the Gatling guns, there'll be some bullet drops, so if you're too far away, the bullet will actually start going downward and it'll hit you. Oh, crap. Oh, here's the switch. Great. Now, I didn't talk about, like, the, the punishing, quote-unquote punishing aspect of the game. When you die, and this is where it is a bit like a, like a Souls-like, uh, you go back to the hub and you have the option of going back out and trying to f reach the spot where you died to reclaim all of your experience points and gold or you can talk to the grim reaper at your base at your hub and he will um, give you half of what you lost of each of those now that's a bummer. I, I really wish that there was a teleportation option to jump back to uh, the, the hub. From where I'm at now, I have to do a lot of backtracking just to get to, to, this, uh, to this portal that'll get me back to, to safety. Um, I think maybe when you interact with the portal, it will refill your health, uh, so you wouldn't necessarily have to go back to, to town. Um, but... You know, in other words, the reason I would choose to do that is if, like, I feel like I'm pushing my luck a little bit. And I like that aspect of Symphony Likes. Like, can I make it to the next save point, you know? So there's, in a different form, that same type of push-your-luck uh, kind of mechanism. And, and I do enjoy that. But instead of, you know, reaching a save point, potentially... I just have to figure out when am I going to turn back around and then walk through or run through as fast as I can all that I've come through so far to get back eventually to the place where I can get my health restored. And all that running back is going to be without any enemies. You know, it's just, it's just running. It's just running. And no combat, no, nothing exciting going on. Now, of course, you can make the argument, and I think it's a fair argument, that, Pater, that's not the way the game's designed to be played. It's designed to be played where you push and push and see how far you make it until you die, not until you chicken out and run back home. <laughs> but, again, I'm presenting this review not from the perspective of someone who likes those kinds of mechanics. I I'm trying to figure out, can someone like me find enjoyment in this game, even though they don't like the Souls-like mechanics? And so, I think if you are like me in that regard, that is a price that you'll have to pay if you want to avoid death. Um, and I, I most times do. I'd much prefer to not have to fight my way back, you know, t just to get all my currency and XP or, or settle for half. So I do usually come to a point where I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm going to make the trek back to the base now.
But you know, even though it's n it's not quite a symphony like, um, and not quite what I want from a game like this, I, I am enjoying a number of things about it. Again, it's not a game that I'm going to sit down and play for long stretches. I don't think. Maybe now and then I'll I'll, I'll unlock some new area and get excited about it for a while. But I think I'm probably going to always end up hitting a grinding point every few stages or something like that. And at those points, I will almost certainly only be playing it in spurts to grind, head back, grind some more, head back. Um, and so I, I can't say that I'm super excited to have purchased this game, but I do think I'll probably see it through to the end and uh, get a decent amount of enjoyment out of it. Um, now, normally I would love to talk about the themes that maybe are uh, displayed in the story of a game. Um, this game, I mean... Games like this are not known for their story. I mean, Time Spinner was a, an unusual, uh, an unusual game in that it really leaned into the story, despite uh, this ga game type not being known for it. And this one, likewise, is a does not have a story that they really seem to be leaning into, at least not at the beginning. Now, on the website describing Forgone, they say that it involves a tale of uh, regret and conspiracy and stuff, and themes of regret in particular I uh, would be really interested in exploring. I love commenting on the themes in entertainment from spe specifically a biblical Christian perspective, but I just haven't seen really much of anything in the story. They, they give you a basic opening crawl at the beginning that says, uh, yeah, this world has gone to crap. I think there's maybe two factions that are kind of going against each other, and uh, you are part of a new breed of defenders or protectors or saviors or whatever you are that's going to hopefully save this world from a horrible, horrible fate, you know. Uh, so it, it, the story I've been exposed to so far has been very basic and very minimally presented. So uh, I don't really have anything at this point, unfortunately, that I can comment on. Now, it does have voice acting, you know, every now and then, um, which it's, it's pretty sparse, but uh, I, I appreciate that, I guess, as a feature. Most of the time, I'm going to turn voice acting off because it just tends to get in the way uh, and is delivered more slowly than I can hammer through the, uh, the dialogue prompts. But this isn't that kind of game. Um, they just kind of give you some little brief spurts of dialogue every now and then. See, here we are, a new level, a new area, and I, these are the same kinds of enemies. Very little variation in enemy types. So, But thankfully, as I said before, the combat is enjoyable. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Let's see here. Oh, crap. Oh! Oops. So, you know, I'm having a, a good enough time uh, to continue with this game. Um, I just, uh, for my tastes, wish I would have known what it was in advance in, in great detail and then I would have waited for a sale. Uh, I think it's about $30, if I remember correctly, on the, the PlayStation Store, and I would want to pay about 15 no more than 20 for sure, for, uh, for what this experience is. Okay, well, thanks for sticking with me through my really rapid-fire thoughts as I record this. I am under some serious time constraints, so it was either do it this way or wait like a week and a half before I got this video out. So uh, I hope that something in what I've shared gives you an idea of whether or not this is a game that you're going to enjoy. Uh, if you have any questions about the game, uh, leave a comment, and I'll try to answer them if I am able. Uh, that's all I have to say for now. I hope you'll join us sometime soon over at ChristianGeekCentral.com as we continue to geek out and seek the truth. For my seventh consecutive year, I'm participating in Extra Life, a charity event that raises funds to provide medical care for children in urgent need. I'm also leading the Christian Geek Central Extra Life team, which you're still welcome to join by following the link in the description below. Once again this year, I'm drawing attention to our team's fundraising by performing a 24-hour marathon of video gaming that I will stream live on youtube.com slash christiangeekcentral and christiangeekcentral.com beginning 5 a.m. Pacific time on Saturday, November 7th. You can donate on my page or any team member's page by following the links below, where you will also find incentives and rewards for doing so. On my page, for example, for a donation of $5, you can choose a topic to add to my plus three page of many topics 
that I'll be blabbing my opinions on during the live stream. For $10, you get the previous reward and a download code for a free copy of the Spirit Blade Special Edition audio drama. For $20, you get the previous rewards and you can choose a game for me to play during my November 7th live stream. Pick a favorite or torture me with something terrible or rage-inducingly difficult. For $30, you get the previous rewards and you can choose a song for me to sing during my November 7th live stream. Pick an old favorite of yours or just make me humiliate and torture myself with something nobody wants to hear. And for $50 or more, you get the previous rewards and a download code for every MP3 product at spiritblade.com. That's an $80 value. On top of that, I have set fundraising milestones that will unlock strange and unusual happenings as I reach them. At two $200, I'll have a free download day for everyone who visits spiritblade.com on November 11th. And as my total goes beyond $200, I'll unlock increasingly more content for the free download day. And depending how far beyond $200 my fundraising goes, during my November 7th live stream, I will show embarrassing clips of a movie I made in college with fellow Spiritblade actor Michael Tully, put on a pair of frozen socks and a frozen t-shirt at the same time, shoot water up my nose with a turkey baster, and have my wife Holly play a video game with me for 30 minutes. And if I reach a personal fundraising total of $500 or more, I will face my greatest and most hated enemy in video gaming. I will finally beat Super Mario Brothers without using cheat codes by the end of 2020, publishing video of my efforts and eventually success and also make my first attempts during my extra life marathon I freaking hate that game but I will do this for those kids and their families and for you sadistic people who donate money to make it happen now there are some stipulations and time limits on those rewards and milestones so quickly follow the link below to my fundraising page for all the details I hope you will be a part of helping me and the Christian Geek Central team do some good for some kids and families who really need it and then I hope you'll join me at youtube.com slash Christian Geek Central for my 24 hour video gaming marathon starting 5 a.m. Pacific time on Saturday, November 7th. Hope to see you then.